G'day, my name's Mark. Uh, I'm a guide here at Alice Springs Desert Park. Today we're doing another one of those videos talking about special trees in Central Australia. The one behind me is called the Desert Bloodwood. Corimbia opaca is the Latin name for it, and uh, it's a really, really important tree in Central Australia. A lot of them are this size, fairly small. They do grow to be very, very large, handsome trees. They're not as impressive from a distance as the ghost gum that we covered previously, but they do have a lot to be said for. We're gonna go in a bit closer and have a look at this one. This specimen, it's not huge, but it's got some great flowers on it. So let's walk over and have a closer look at those flowers. Just up here in the canopy, you can see there's some new flowers that haven't quite popped out of the, the buds yet. And you can see the flowers that have emerged. They're very popular with pollinating insects. They love the nectar and of course, by getting that nectar, they're taking the pollen from this tree and taking it to the next bloodwood that they go to and fertilizing the other bloodwoods. And that's how they reproduce these trees. They then will produce a nut. And it's that nut that's very obvious. And that's one of the features that botanists use to identify the bloodwood. Now, there's not many things look like a bloodwood out here. Let's go in closer and have a look at the bark because the bark's one of the really important features of this tree that uh, really set it apart. You can see here it's got this nice patchy look to it, almost like a mosaic and lots of different colors for it, different ages of the bark. The older bark is a, is a much more gray color. The younger stuff is yellows and reds. It's very beautiful, I think. I really like it. And that's really distinctive. Other trees in the region like Coolabar, they all have bark like this, but only up to a certain height and then above that it'll be white. But on the desert bloodwood, it pretty much extends all the way up the tree, that beautiful mosaic bark. It's got a comparatively large leaf as well. And just up at the back there, you can just see some of those black lumps growing in it. They're called desert coconuts. That's actually a gall from an insect. And uh, that's a topic we'll cover in another presentation because they're a pretty important thing in their own right. But they live on the desert bloodwood as well. But those flowers that we could see up there at the top, they're really important. Um, that's a way that the tree can take sunlight, water and air and produce sugar. And that sugar feeds a huge range of wildlife, things like honey eaters. And in the, pot, in the past, creatures like possums. The brush-tailed possum was an animal that was very common in Central Australia. And it loves the flowers. It would actually eat the flowers whole and its intestines would be full of flowers. And so Aboriginal people, when they hunted them, um, that was when it was best to go for possum because they would be, you know, they'd come basted with, uh, a, if you cook them, with a whole bunch of kind of sweet content in the inside. So really interesting uh, little sort of fact about life in the past here in Central Australia. The possum now is extremely rare in Central Australia. So they really are, uh, there's not gonna be many people hunting those now, but uh, in the past, very important food source for people. So desert bloodwood. There's a lot of different trees, they can look very different. And there's something really important about this tree that we're gonna to have to go and find another specimen to have a look at that. It's the sap of the tree. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go elsewhere in the park and find a tree that's got that beautiful sap leaking out and we're gonna talk about that. We've gone to another place in the park, to another tree, and we find one that's got what we were looking for. It's got some sap leaking out of the tree. Now the sap is a kind of deep red color and that's where the name for the tree comes from, bloodwood. So as you get in close, if you want to zoom in and have a closer look here, you can just see here there's some sap leaking out of a wind in the tree. It's actually leaking out from up there. What I'm going to do is I'll just gently touch it. We'll get some crumble off on it my hands. Uh, the tree produces a lot of this stuff, so it's not a big deal. But you can kind of see it there. Now it looks very black actually, but often it's quite red. If you get a bigger chunk of it, it can be quite red. And this stuff is what's used as a bush antiseptic. So it's very antiseptic. Mix it up with water, apply it to a wound. It's very, very effective antiseptic. It does cause scarring though. So um, it really is one of those things of last resort, but it's a very effective um, antiseptic in, uh, in the old days. And it's very abundant. There's a very, very common tree and the trees, it's very common for them to have these wounds with the blood coming out of it. So that's where the name bloodwood comes from. And for that and lots of other reasons, this tree, very important to local Aboriginal people. They're really a culturally important tree. It's great for wildlife as well. And they're very, very handsome. And I love that bark. I really love that kind of 
uh, mosaic look to the bark. It really is quite artistic. I, I really enjoy it. I always go take up close photographs of them. They don't look great, but uh, it's, it's something that really attracts me and I really love this tree. Thanks for watching.